it's so good to hear that super reverb breathing. It's nice. Huh? Ah! Ah! <laughs> hello, welcome to that pedal show. Mick here. Dan here, hello. Everyone with OCD, that's going to completely stuff them off. I know, I know, because he normally starts, but he was pausing, there was no words coming out, I had to jump in there. Anyway, welcome to the show, bit of housekeeping. Please subscribe, if you like this, please subscribe, click the link below. And if you really like it, head to www.thatpedalshowstore.com and maybe think about buying a t-shirt, it's what kind of keeps us doing what we do. Sales pitch over. There we go. There we go. Another interesting show today, Mick. When are they not interesting, Dan? Exactly. That's my exactly. question. Exactly. Another one. <laughs> um, you want to introduce this one? Yeah, I'm, Dan's, yeah. Dan's, Dan's skating around the potential issue of ethics because anyone who knows anything about the Timmy pedal by Paul Cochran will know that it has been much copied. Much copied. We're going to come on to discuss that in a sec uh, and issues around ethics and morals and all of that, which we've got a pretty short answer for, but anyway, we'll come on to that in a sec. Two other pedals that are talked about a lot in the same breath as the uh, Timmy, depending on which forum you frequent and what search engine you use, are the Vemuram, Vemuram, Vemuram? Yes. Either one of those, Jan Ray, which is kind of like the latest boutique, extremely expensive overdrive pedal that everybody loves. Mm -hmm and the Love Pedal Amp 11, both mm -hmm. of which are said to, depending on who you listen to, be clones of, copies of, derived of, however you want to describe it, the much-loved Timmy. Timmy! Is that fair enough? You know it's not called it because of that. Isn't it? No. It's well, I know he had the... He, so originally... Python. Is it really? So he originally had the Tim. Uh, the Tim is the big version of this that also has an effects loop in it. Yep. Very, very cool. And a boost, version. isn't it? That, that's boost. the only difference. Uh, okay. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I did, I, I, did, I did the usual amount of research required for one of these shows, which was five minutes reading on the internet last night. No. <laughs> and so this is the smaller version of... Yeah, yes, of course it is. This is a smaller version without the boost, without the loop. Yeah, and because the Tim is no longer made. That's right. Yeah. So it's the same circuit and... Previous versions of the Timmy had internal dip switches, which uh, varied the amount of compression and how it clipped. Mm -hmm. That switch is now on the top. Right. So it's the stuff of folklore. Lots of people really love it. Mm -hmm. As that kind of predominantly clean booster type thing, if you want it through mm -hmm. to a very touch sensitive overdrive, mm -hmm. isn't it? So it's the it's the holy grail. It's the overdrive holy grail, isn't it? Yes. It's the overdrive that doesn't change your sound. Yeah, see now I talked to Paul Cochran about this and he said, well, you know, not designed to no. be a transparent overdrive at all. <laughs> it's just a gain circuit that he, he came up with and really likes. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so we'll do the amps one at a time. We've got the Super. <laughs> That's, now that is a sound. That is a great sound. Funnily enough, with that app, you do have to get it to a point where that mm. works like that. It's turned up to a point, it's not uncomfortable people, our ears are fine, yeah. but it is turned up to a point where it's working. Just about working. Yeah. And the other app is, of course, the Hampson. <laughs> You put them on together and it sounds like this. I am just going to knock the super down a touch. Ah. Uh because -huh. it is really loud. Okay. Again. Yeah. with my guitar, but you know, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that's that's better. I'm happy. Okay, very good. He's <laughs> happy now. Right, so can we start by just explaining a couple of things about the Timmy? Because we have featured the Timmy before on a show and we didn't do it in very much depth. We didn't really talk about how the controls work or the or the um switches. So let's just do that. Okay. Now, I know this, Dan, because I read the manual. Well done. Which doesn't happen often. 
<laughs> it's a special day, people. It's a special it is day. a special day. So everyone remember how it's set now because we're going to put it back there in a sec. Okay. According to uh, the manual and mm -hmm. uh, what, what Paul Cochran says, this... is a straight clean boost. Okay. <laughs> It's still, um, so the knobs work reverse. Yeah. But this, apart from the volume. They're cut controls. They're cut controls. So even, even with the treble uh, off, off, as in not, not, on. not on, not cutting not anything, cutting, yeah. it's still a little bit darker. So go on then. <laughs> So I hope what that demonstrates is the controls on the Timmy don't work like most other overdrive pedals. As Dan said, the, the EQ controls are cut controls, mm -hmm. like you would expect on an old Vox amp with the, the cut control. Um, and according to, again, the suggestion from Paul Cochran, kinda, the cleaner you have it, the less cut you want on the, on the EQ, right? because that keeps it more transparent. Mm -hmm. And the driver you get it, the more you want to balance that high end mm -hmm. to taste. Which, yeah. yeah. So Beautiful. as you can hear, I mean, that's quite a lot of, a huge amount of gain range it's, there. Yeah, I'm surprised actually. Yeah. So the other thing, just before we move on, mm -hmm. sorry, did you, uh, am I? No, I was just going to say, it's one of those pedals that you could have on like all the time. A lot of people do, don't they? Yeah, yeah. That's why people love it so much. Because mm. it's the kind of more pedal. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so before we move on then, I'll just dial a bit of gain in and explain the three position switch. So as we said at the top, um, it used to be internal dip switches. Now, I'm going to have to refer to my notes here because I, notes. I never get it the right way around. Okay, so I'm assuming one... Come on, uh, then. I'll uh, test you. All right. Uh, it's going to be... Steiner! <laughs> Steiner! <laughs> what uh, do the three positions of the Timmy Overdrive pedal do? Different, different diode selections. One's going to be asymmetrical clipping, one's going to be symmetrical clipping, and one's going to be no diode selection. Nearly. Okay. Two out of three. Sixty-six percent. C minus. Get out. B minus. Okay. Go to my class. Uh, so apparently, here you go. I'm going to read this because I can't remember. It gives. Congratulations on your new purchase. Yeah. The the middle position is the least compressed symmetrical setting. Right. Okay. You're correct. Yes. Down is more compre compressed symmetrical. Yes. And up is. Asymmetrical. Okay. So we're assuming that middle and up are the least compressed or less compressed and mm -hmm. the down is uh, compressed symmetrical. Symmetrical and asymmetrical clipping, please, Steinhardt. Okay. So if you imagine your waveform, if you do a little diagram there. It's like the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> Beautiful. There's your waveform. So there's our, there's our waveform. That's the, so the sound of the guitar. Asymmetrical clipping is when only one side of that waveform is clipped. Okay, and it is literally just turning off one of the diodes. Either the up or the down. Either the up or the down. Symmetrical clipping is where both sides are clipped evenly. Right, so let's, enough talking. So back to the, I'm gonna go through the three modes. The first one is the um, symmetrical. Less clipped. Less clipped. In the center. Yes, and then I'll go to the asymmetrical, less clipped, and then I'll go to the symmetrical, most clipped, compressed. Okay. Setting, yeah? So, we're on the least compressed. Uh <laughs> 
Righteous. Yeah. So, depending on your point of view, you might say subtle, or you might say massive difference. I mean, mm. certainly between the most compressed and the middle one. Mm. Get in the context of, you know, fuzz next to overdrive next to distortion, we're talking subtle. Yes. But in the context of actually what that's doing to the dynamics of, of your playing, it's Absolutely. pretty significant, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. The, like the center position, uh, you hear more of the guitar, it's more dynamic. Yeah. Um, so I can go from picking softer to picking harder. Just try that again in the uh, most compressed mode. It's very different. Very different. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope most of that's going to come through on the audio, but that's sat here. It's very, very different. Very different. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I guess, you know, balance it up, get the bit you like, whether you want to go for that much more clean type boost. So for, to, to put some brackets around that, um, we often speak to players who like using a lot of gain in their amp. Mm -hmm. And when they come to try and boost that, a traditional overdrive or distortion pedal is often difficult. Yes. Because just the amount of compression that, that, that has, the amount of uh, EQ, gain, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so in that sense, you might like the uncompressed mode because it's just putting more level in, you've got plenty of pick attack in the guitar. Yep, yep. Whereas, you know, if you've got a pretty spiky sounding Fender type amp and you want to have some more ease in the notes mm -hmm. and a bit, of, bit more elasticity under the fingers, the compressed mode, you, right. might, you might enjoy that more. It's a very personal thing. Yep. Yeah, and balancing it up with the gain control, of course, crucial. Yeah. Can I, let me just, uh, I'd quite like, because I haven't, I have, this is the first time I've ever played in any detail with the Timmy, so okay. let's just see what it sounds like with the old Strat. So immediately, can you just give us the, the, the amp sound a sec? That's great. What a great sound. Great sound. And I just want to flip over to the, I'm going to give it a bit more volume because we've gone over to the slightly more clipped sound. <laughs> Like that. Yeah. That just, now it doesn't sound in any way whatsoever like a Tube Screamer. No. But that puts it 2% more towards Tube Screamer because it's got that extra compression. Mm -hmm. And I think what I, what I really like about it already is it's those subtleties that you don't get in most pedals. Yeah. You don't get that option. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe something like a full drive or whatever, and we'll come on to do that in another show. Mm -hmm. But the fact, yeah, I like it. Dynamically, yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's great. I mean, you know, when um, when Paul did this pedal, you know, there was nothing like it at the time. You know, it's completely unique. And it sounds fantastic. It does. Mm. It does. We definitely didn't do enough of it in the last <laughs> no. show. Okay, well, that's good. We've put that right. Okay, so let's move on to the Jan Ray. Okay. So, um, interesting this, because some... Fairly decent names are associated with the Jan Ray. So mm -hmm. Scott Henderson uses it, would you mm -hmm. believe? Um, lover of his exotic uh, RC booster. Mm -hmm. Matt Schofield uses it. Does he? He does, or wow. at least he's on the Vemuram website. Oh yeah, sorry. Matt Schofield. Oh, Matt Schofield. <laughs> Our friend Matt Schofield. Um, hello Matt, if you're watching. Yeah, if you guys get a chance to go and see Matt Schofield play, don't, because it'll just make you feel really terrible about yourself. Matt Schofield is, for me, mm -hmm. the best 
jump, boogie, jazzy, bluesy player, hands down. I've probably seen Matt about probably six or seven times now. And last time I saw him was he was playing at the Arts Centre in Swindon. And the guy is just so masterful. He's he, that stuff, that yeah. bluesy yeah. Um, sort of Robin Ford. But there's a, there's an there's an edge to it as it's well. It's Robin it's, Ford. It's Albert Collins. It's Robert Cray. It's, it's Stevie Ray. Yeah. It's, and if you like your Josh Smith. Your um, yeah, Robin Robin's worth mentioning. Robin Ford, uh, even into the sort of Guthrie traps and you know if you like that kind of tricky blues playing and chords, man, chords. Yeah. Oh my god, anyway, uh, just incredible. We could go on about Matt for days. So yeah. uh, he's great. If you get a chance to go and see him, go and see him yeah. because he's just sensational. And 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 lots of people have been you know I talk to friends and you tell them about this pedal and they like it. So enough of that. Let's hear it, shall we? Oh, it's me. <laughs> so it's got the way it's set currently, a little bit less high end, a little bit more mid push, I would say. Mm -hmm. Shall we see how close we can get it to the Timmy, do you think? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the controls do. I have to get another bit. Okay, of so. This is the volume, gain. Uh, I'm gonna go for bottom, uh, bass and treble. Correct. 10 out of 10, Steinhardt. Yes. <laughs> it's also got a saturation trimmer. Oh, right. Which we need a small uh, screwdriver for. So, okay, right. Okay. So, Timmy, yeah? <laughs> same ballpark. Definitely the same ballpark. I can get a little bit more top end out of the jam ray, but not that that's really anything. Um, there's a there's a difference, a tiny difference for mid-range. Well, I, th I actually think it would probably sound more like it on the old... Because what I was feeling under the fingers, mm -hmm. under my fingers, was, uh, was a little bit more el elasticity in a right. little bit more... Maybe we just need to just... Sorry, folks. We need to just turn the volume down a little bit because we're at risk of clippage on the on the recorder. Yeah, I can definitely hear differences. Yeah, you know, definitely. But they are they are very close. Yeah. Um, can we try a bit more gain? Yes. Maybe hear the telly or yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, I just want to you play or tweak. Okay. Should we do that? Yep. So two is semi, three is January. <laughs>
pretty similar mm -hmm. and a similar range of gain. Okay. Would you say? Yeah. Um, both huge, huge clarity. Mm. That's at, ve yeah. That's at the no thing, point isn't does it? that get like mushy or, and lost and over compressed. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Indeed. And uh, yeah, lest we say anything about the price. Right. Amp eleven. Amp eleven. I didn't realise this was linked to the the Timmy. Didn't you? No, I didn't. Um, I mean, partly because it's a jewel. Is that because of the Tim? I think so. The only reason that I found out this was linked to the Timmy is because of the comments from the last video. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, I've got them set up. So, you know, there's Oh, the, I've been uh, messing around. That's all right. I? Here we go. Let's get back to where we were, which was sort of roughly about there, I think. <laughs> And the F11. Sounds good that pedal. It does always sound fantastic. Let's um I now I think I remember it having more gain. Let's have a <laughs> You know what? The t the amp eleven is just it's a different thing, especially with the extra boost section. With the extra boost, but it doesn't have the same amount of uh, gain to start with, like without the boost. Yeah. But I don't know. It sounds. Uh, I don't know. It sounds. I mean, it sounds awesome. I think that's one of the best sounds we've ever had in this room. Wow. Which might be because it's kind of loud, but getting getting loud. Not yeah. too loud, people. We are safe. But it's yeah, it's bringing out the best in the amps, which is yes. exactly what you just said. Yes. Right. So shall we just for two seconds talk very briefly about the issue of morals and ethics when it comes to pedal design? Because there are going to be a million comments, and I hope what is said now will mean that there are fewer of those comments. Mm -hmm. In some cases, quite rightly, elements of the pedal community get very, very upset mm -hmm. about the ethics of copying circuit designs. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, let's take Paul Cochran for example, one man, well, a very small operation, mm -hmm. doing stuff, presumably not making millions of pounds, and then somebody comes along and either does or doesn't copy the design. Yeah, if you knew Paul and yeah, I, and you'd you know, feel I've pretty bad to, about that. Yeah, and I've talked to Paul, and he's, you know, he's great. You know, and he is of a similar mindset. I mean, he's not, um, he's just getting on with what he does, yeah. you know, and just doing his own thing. Um, but there's a big difference between a moral issue and a legal issue, and here's the point. My set of ethics and morals are completely different to other people's. Mm -hmm. So in the same breath that I hear people getting very hot under the collar about stolen pedal designs, they're playing a guitar that was designed in the 1950s under a different brand name through an amp which has a circuit that's essentially taken from some Fender amp somewhere uh, originally from the RCA tube manual. That's it. The whole of musical instrument development is that stage thing. Plus, let's say you might be using a hooky bit of software on your computer. <laughs> let's say you might have downloaded a film off some torrent site. Let's say you might have illegally shared an MP3. Let's say you might have copied an image off Google and published it illegally. I've been working in the IP business for nearly 20 years. I run mm. magazines. And my IP got stolen, ripped off, reproduced, left, right and centre. The difference is, do you want to defend it? Dan designed a brilliant pedal switcher. Dan 
How many people have copied your pedal switcher? Well, certainly, you know, the idea, you know, it's, yeah, it happens. It's part, it's just, it doesn't make it okay, but there's a massive difference between what you believe is right and whether you want to enforce that under the law. And everyone's got a different set of morals and ethics. Mm. So I think it's absolutely good to have an opinion. I think it's right if you if you feel very strongly about something to air that opinion. Mm -hmm. But these kind of sweeping statements about stuff that's, you know, completely right and completely wrong, it's a very personal decision. Yeah. That's yeah. that's my personal take on it. Mm. I, you know, I tend to play branded stuff and I play stuff built by people who I know and like. Mm -hmm. That's my take on yeah. it. Which, yeah, yeah. which is completely different from somebody who, you know, um, some Chinese copy pedal costs 19 quid, it's really cheap to buy, that's all you can afford. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you don't, you know, there are those copies and I hear less people kicking off about those yeah. than I do these, which yeah. I find very interesting. Yeah, um, it's a really hot topic, it gets people really yeah. upset and no doubt this will probably spoil a load of comments, but I think, I think it is important to say that a moral issue and a legal issue are just so far apart. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know, like for me personally, you know, we've just cracked on and continued to innovate and, you know, do what we do because anything else is it diverts your energy from where yeah. it really should be. Yeah. You know, it just it's one of those things, it just happens. It's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. And I I I would I would say that there are products that exist in the market that are there only to undercut price. Yes. And be there as a margin, you know, be there as a, a volume profit making thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's comedy of boutique pedals. The, concept, the perception is that boutique pedal makers make tons of money. No, the people making oh, tons no. of money are the people selling 28,000. 20 pound pedals. 20 pound pedals, <laughs> yeah. Right. Anyway, we've probably dug ourselves into a bit of a hole, but I think in the context of this discussion, it's probably important to yeah. To say something. On it's a that. it's a tricky conversation to have. It is. And but the reason that we're having it is that you guys have asked us. You yeah. Know, and it's it's something that's come up time and again. So, you know, we're not um, certainly not advocating it. We're just saying that it happens. And if you put it in context, yeah, with everything. The pedals else, are out there. They exist, and people buy them. So yeah. to ignore that is to is. Well, yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, all that said, I know which one of those pedals I'd have. <laughs> really? Yeah, without a doubt. Okay, and I didn't. On. I didn't think I would. Really? Yep. Okay. And I don't know why I didn't think I would. Okay. And it is. I'd have a Timmy. Right. Every day of the week, and primarily because of that clipping option. That's great, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, you know. It's fantastic. I'll have all of them. <laughs> <laughs> he, he never nails his flag to the post, does he? No. I don't think you'd be, you you wouldn't be sorry with any one of them. No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. I, you know, I do love the look of the Jan Ray. <laughs> I think it is absolutely gorgeous. It does look pretty sexy. And it sounds wonderful. But the Timmy is just nailing it. It's, it's fantastic. Mm. The Amp 11, it sounds different. Different thing. Different thing. Yeah. And I love it. Every yeah. time we've plugged that in, it's like, oh, yeah, man, this thing sounds awesome. Yeah. So I, for me, I just have to have all of them. Well, that's good. Yes. Because they're all ours. <laughs> okay, so by the magic of television, uh, you've, heard, you've heard single calls. So we're just going to, to finish, we're just going to run through a selection of sounds, humbuckers, P90, It'll be obvious which pedal's turned on and uh, just to play us out. So uh, remind me again, Dan, two is... Timmy! Timmy. It's a Monty Python reference, by the way. But I have to say, Timmy! <laughs> um, uh, and four... Is the F11, three is the Janeway. Okay. <laughs>
Cheers, guys. Hope you like that, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye.